Hey there everyone, happy Thursday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 p.m. Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it is a time where we can relax and craft for about an hour. And I typically work on projects from beginning to end uh, uh, throughout however many days it takes so you guys can be part of the whole process and join me along the way and see all the mistakes and see all the wins and we can make stuff here together and just chit chat. Uh, so tonight though, I thought we'd take a look at my three vintage Kenmore sewing machines one I have not even plugged in ever, uh, and so and I've been told when I bought it, uh, I actually bought it for the cabinet, <laughs> and the machine just kind of came with the cabinet. Uh, so I was told that it doesn't work. I thought we could kind of look at that and see what we find out, uh, and then we could also oil uh, this other machine that I haven't, um, the one that we've been working currently on, the 1938 Kenmore sewing machine. We could. Uh, find all the oiling spots for that and take care of that a little bit. It got full of dust uh, last time we were working on with it. We found that out. So it's probably never been cleaned. I, you know, I've, it's, I'm pretty new to this machine too. So I, I probably didn't even clean it and got started on it. And then we will look at my normal machine, which is from 1975. And uh, will the presser feet weren't lowering. Uh, so I brought that in for that and they're just getting plain stuck. So we'll try yanking on those a little bit and see if we can affect that at all. So uh, you'll have like a couple generations of machines here. So I'm kind of excited to play around with it. But I mean, I'm telling you, I have not, I've literally not even turned on the one. So who knows what that'll be like. So we'll see. We'll see if we can even turn it on. We'll see, you know, if we can find anything that's wrong with it and we'll wipe them all down and... You know, it's just, we're going to learn our machines a little bit uh, today. Uh, and this is something I would have never dared to do a few years ago. But since doing these Facebook Lives with you guys, I don't know, I feel like I've been a little bit more daring in uh, trying to uh, work things out. And uh, you guys know a lot of things and have been getting me good suggestions. And it's just made this whole process of like, well, we can oil our own machine and you know i've been become more confident at figuring that out so we're going to take a look at this machine i've never even touched and see if we can you know now that we're <laughs> daring if we can go dig into that one as well so all right i'm going to flip you around we'll take a look at these couple machines and uh see what we see what we see i guess so thanks again for joining me everyone all right so i'm gonna back up here so these are the, the three machines. So we have, we have this one. This is the 1938 Kenmore. And this has got those just super cool graphics on it. I just freaking love this machine. So this is the one that we are currently sewing on. I have not used it much. This is the one that got all full of dust and uh, we are trying to figure out how to clean it. So I want to oil this machine tonight. Uh, I also got the manual <laughs> online here and printed it out. So I'm hoping to find, um, I'm hoping to find, actually, this is the one. I'm hoping to find just the areas to oil, you know, like in, in here somewhere, it's got like where to where to oil it and how to thread it and, and all that. So we'll take a look at those. So you can actually get all these instructions for free if you go onto the Sears, uh, like if you go to sears.com uh, and then type into manuals or something like that, you can actually download all the manuals for these machines for free if it's a Sears Kenmore machine. So, all right, so that's the one. This is from 1938. And then I got my, my 70s one. So this is from, this is the uh, the one back here. That is my machine that I've been using for years and years. It used to be my mom's. She got it in college. And this is the one that the presser feet, I can't get to lower. And I brought in, so we'll take, take a look at that. That is from 1975, I believe. And then this one, 
which looks very similar, uh, but it, it is a bit different. And we'll look at some of those. Uh, this is the one I have not touched whatsoever. So this is from, uh, this is a Sears Kenmore from 1967. So we got a 30s, a 60s, and a 70s uh, sewing machine uh, going on here. And we'll take a look at some of the differences, but it's kind of, you know, apparently I am now a Kenmore collector. Uh, once you got three, I think it's a collection, right? Uh, so, all right. I think we'll start off with um, our guy here. So this is, this again is what we've been using as of late. I'm going to just get a little closer here. Uh, let's take the, the, um, top off. Um, you know what? Maybe let's just look at a couple different differences between these machines quick. So I think the biggest, at least to me, the biggest difference is how the motor works. So if I just shimmy this around. Um, okay, so this machine has a motor on the outside and it has a motor pulley. So that is what this is right here. So I'm going to bring this other machine So you can see just the difference a little bit. So this one, these both have motors, but you see this one has a belt. So the 19, whoa, heavy scooching these guys around. So the, the 1967 uh, one, is that what it was from? I forget already. 1960, yep, the 1967 one, that has a belt. It still has the motor on the outside, but it has a belt. This has a motor pulley. So this is from 1938. Uh, the motor pulley works differently. So this is, you know, it's a belt. It's a motor belt. So the wheel turns and it turns the belt and the belt turns this bigger wheel. This is more direct. So this motor has a little wheel, a tiny wheel right on it. And that's going against the big wheel. So this little wheel turning is what moves the big wheel. It does not have a belt. And then we have the third machine over here. This one uses two belts actually, and they're both enclosed. So I have to actually take off this whole side, which is actually kind of difficult to do to access it. And, and you guys who have been with me a while here got to experience that a little because we actually changed the belt in here because uh, the belt got cracked and broken we discovered discovered that so we actually changed the belt in here ourselves, which was an adventure so uh three different ways uh these two i would say are more similar this is just enclosed uh and this is not so this is within the same 10 years so this is a shift in the 10 years whereas this you know the motor pulley i think that was um more typical you know back in the 30s sort of time. Oh, you remember that, Don, when we tried to change? <laughs> it worked. I mean, we managed it. Uh, we, we switched the belt out of there. That was, that was a challenge, though. I've never, I had never taken all this stuff off, um, and it was hard. I, I'm still not sure we did it quite right, because I had to kind of yank on things to get this open, and I, I don't know, but it seemed, it seemed, I mean, it's working, so. <laughs> so I believe this might be the only belt on this. We'll have to see. And again, the motors on the outside and then, but I just think this is so unique, at least to me, cause I'm not used to it. The motor pulley, which is just this little dial. It's got a little rubber on and uh, it turns, turns that wheel. But yeah, if it's too slick, you, you kind of want to rough it up with some sandpaper. I haven't done that yet. Cause if it's too slick, like I'm turning it and this isn't turning. So it needs to, it needs to get a grip, a grip on there. Um, so it slides a little bit, whereas the belts don't, don't as much. All right, so let's, um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to oil this machine. I'd like to flip it up underneath. Ooh, my fingers are getting dirty already. Uh, and we'll like de-dust underneath and I'd like to oil the top. We'll look in the manual on how to oil it and we'll clean it off a little bit. This is what we've been using lately just cause it's fun and, and cute. Um, and then I think we'll, we'll look at this machine, my normal uh, machine that I use. This is the 75 uh, Kenmore. And we'll just look at those presser feet because that's that was the issue that I brought it in for and he fixed it, but they've been not working for so long that they just get stuck. So we're going to actually take like a screwdriver and try and, 
you know, dig into it. I don't, I don't know. I watched him do it and uh, he's like, you're just going to need to like do it every day, which I haven't done. <laughs> so they're probably totally stuck again. We'll take a look at that. Uh, and then this machine, again, just I've done nothing with it. Uh, I think let's just take a look at it. Uh, let's tip it over, see if it's super dusty. Let's, let's thread it. Let's see if there's a bobbin in there. I don't even know if there's a bobbin. Uh, and then let's see what we can do. Oh, the other unique thing about... I'm going to switch to these two quick. So the other kind of interesting thing about this one is that to get like a zigzag stitch or other special stitches, it has this cam thing. So, uh, and it came, it came with a whole box. These are called cams. So you take one of these and I've not tried this yet. So we can maybe try this if we get the machine working, but you see right on the right here. So that is, that is the shape that this is going to, going to make magically somehow. I don't quite know. I don't quite understand these. Oh, it's, it's probably, you know, you see this outer edge. That's what's making the shape. See, so like it's wide right there. So that's probably where these big bumps are. And then it gets really skinny. That's probably where the, the skinny is. So you stick these in the top and then close this up. And then all of a sudden you're doing like a zigzag stitch, you know? Uh, so they're called cams. Uh, there we go. You close it up and this doesn't seem like it closes all the way. I don't know. We'll, we'll see if we can figure that out a bit. But I thought that was interesting. Something different. You know, these look pretty similar, but that's another thing that's different with this versus this where you just have all the stitches on the, on the dial. So, all right, let's start with the black one here. Oof, heavy suckers. And um, we'll see what we see with this and work our way up. All right, so uh, just the first thing I want to do is address uh, the sticker here. So, well, I'm going to take the thread off, but I put this sticker here to help me with the scant quarter inch. So that's like my quarter inch line. So it's a qu from the needle to this uh, painter's tape. It's, it's a quarter inch, uh, but look at what it's doing. So if I take that off, it has left this really odd, ooh, it's even dusty. It's left this odd residue. So uh, I think what I wanna try, someone mentioned that here, I just wanna get just a rag here and I'm gonna see, this is a damp rag. Oh, and good, that seems to be working. So that seems to be coming off. That's good, because the thing that I like the most about this machine is this matte black finish. It's called a crinkle finish. Uh, I think uh, I think Singer had a version of this crinkle, but I think they call it something else. Do you guys know what they call it? It, it, it rhymes with crinkle. <laughs> but they all, all the different manufacturers had their own name for this style but good that worked that worked great okay so that that um you know i don't even know i don't know if it was just putting something down or picking something up that made that residue but good that came off right away so what i'm going to use instead for the future oh here's oh no that's that's part of it that weird little shape there oh no maybe it's not there's like a little glue dot here or something yeah that seems to be staying. Okay, so I'm gonna use this magnet instead in the future. So this is meant for the same thing. On a metal, an all metal machine like this. Oh, Gina, me too, I'm so glad that that came off. That would have been so sad. Uh, but yeah, so this magnetic um, seam guide, I guess it's probably called a seam guide, wow, it's really stuck. This is a powerful magnet, that's kind of, which is great. Um, so now, we can put this down wherever we want that seam allowance. So we'll measure, we won't do that today, but we'll measure when we want to use this machine again, our quarter inch seam allowance. And again, I have this, uh, if you want to look this up, this is that Perkins Dry Goods uh, Perfect Piecing Seam Guide, and it has a little hole for the needle, and uh, we'll put that uh, needle in the hole there and then line up where that quarter inch should be and then we'll we'll put our magnet down and we'll just we'll try that out for a while and that again is to get that good quarter inch seam allowance so that when we put up put two pieces of fabric there 
we can just sew up against here and that will help us keep our straight line. That's that's the point of a seam guide. And I and I just happen to have I have two of these and I don't know where I acquired them. Uh, when I got one of these old machines, it was probably in the bin somewhere. So it's pretty hefty. Uh, I like it. Uh, and, you know, this actually only works with this machine. It does not work with my 70s Kenmore because the top of my 70s one must be um, a different kind of metal. Or I think it's aluminum, and aluminum didn't, uh, it doesn't do the magnetic thing. But this thing, man, and this nice flat surface, it works perfect. So, all right, we, um, on, uh, when was it? Yesterday, or no, two days ago or something, we found out, I unscrewed this top here and we just found out how crazy dusty it was so i'm gonna take that off again just so we can see and i want to oil this tonight as well all right i just noticed that my video popped off again so um i will post this video tonight but it won't have comments again so it'll just be it'll just be the video all right there look at all that so this was totally um full of fuzz and we got the we got a pipe cleaner in here and kind of worked at it but i'm just kind of curious if we how we did here it looks okay so i'm, I'm gonna take out the bobbin which always kind of scares me this is a little this is a, it's a different bobbin that I'm used to. So see this one comes like straight straight up like this. A little different than what I am used to. So I'm afraid I'm, I'm always going to mess it up. But I'm going to just leave that be. And I'm going to tilt this on its back. Which I have not done with this machine yet either. And we'll take a look underneath. And maybe we'll oil underneath first. And then then um, do the top. So I have not, this is not plugged in, just, just so you know, don't do this with it um, ugh, plugged in. This always scares me with these heavy machines, um, tilting them everywhere, but oh well, it's good. All right, so let's take a look underneath. All right, we are looking kind of dusty here. So I, I did put these little carpet feet on, so we're gonna have to probably push those back on again, but Wow, this almost looks crooked. I wonder if it's supposed to look like that. Doesn't it? I mean, it might it might on purpose be like that, but I can already tell. I can already see all the dust up in here. This seems weird to me. I'm not sure it's supposed to be all tilted like that. But underneath it doesn't look so dusty. Like there's no... It doesn't stand out like how it did how it did on the top. I wonder if I turn this. Yeah, so this will turn in here. This is like part of the bobbin case in here, it looks like. All right, so let's get, ooh, let's just peek what's in this hole here. You can see a little bit more stuff moving in there. <laughs> um, all right. Anyway, so let's Let's see where we oil it. So typically you oil, a lot of times they have like little guides. So these little holds, holes there are where we would want to oil. Oh gosh, I'm almost out of oil. I don't even know if I have more oil over here. I'm going to have to get some more, some more oil. Uh, but yeah, we'll take a look at this. So I want to check out, I got this, um, the rotary sewing machine, this this Kenmore sewing machine manual, and you can uh, you can find these if you just Google. Oh, here we go, oil. If you just Google like free free sewing machine um, manuals, and then type in the the serial number like here here the serial number is right here one one seven eight three one. And then there's another there's another serial number a little further. Oh, that that's the model number. Oh yeah, so it's yeah, eight. Oh well, this is an eight three one. That's not on the list here, but I think it's it's awfully close. It looks it looks similar enough that it'll do the job for us here. But yeah, actually, now that I'm looking at it, it might not be the exact same same model. So we'll have to we'll have to see. But anyway, let's let's uh, let's look at some of these points. I mean, obviously, this isn't the greatest picture, but you know, let's just see. 
Okay, oil. So it is pointing out what looks like um, these holes. And then a lot of times it's just where kind of metal meets metal. I think that's re uh, pointing to this part here. Yeah, so again, over here, here's another hole. That's a typical place. And then again, metal on metal in this hole here. So there, there looks like a, there's a G here. I suspect that's for grease. I've never done that before. Um, there's an area sometimes, like when a machine's really, really dirty, sometimes people will take grease and uh, put it there. That seems to be pointing right here, but I don't know. I don't know why there would be grease there. I suppose I could read the instructions too, but we're just going to we're just going to um, get the thing out here. So I'm. I, this is from my the '70s machine, and it just holds oil in the little brush there, which is kind of cool. So I'm just going to kind of drip oil on some of these spots. So again, it's kind of where metal meets metal. And um, those little kind of holes. And the holes just kind of filter, I think, the the uh, oil to where that needs to go in the gear or whatever. Oh, there's another little one. Let's get that. But they're nice little guides to have have that oil. And then, you know, a lot of times you can really feel if it if it if it's working. Just get some on the top here. I'm afraid of running out. This is weird. I wonder when this moves. Oh, there it's moving a little. All right. And I think, you know, so the idea is to just kind of be consistent. Uh, you, oh, here, there's a little hole right up here. Uh, you want to do this every so often just to keep everything smooth. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's see what else. So that's interesting that there's nothing listed in the bobbin area here for oiling. Oil holes are provided on the arm of the machine for parts which cannot be reached directly. Okay. Um, moderate use requires only an occasional drop of oil at all the points. All right. The oil to oil the works underneath the bed plate. Turn the back. And oil points to the blah, 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 automatic lift machines. Okay. Cleaning machine. All right. So it doesn't say anything about in the bobbin area. And uh, versus my 70s Kenmore, there was quite a bit to do in the bobbin area. So I'm just, I guess I'm just not going to worry about that. Let's tilt it up and we'll, we'll do the top. So I'm just going to heft this thing up. Ugh. I want to set it up straight so that my little carpet bobs at the bottom work. So here at the top, you can see some of these, these holes. So now some of these holes might be for extra attachments. So I just want to make sure. All right. Nope. Th those are for oil still. So this and this, and there's actually one underneath here. Uh, that's all for oil. So that will drip it into where it needs to go. And it looks like there's a couple bits. Yep. The two right there. What else? Okay, on the top, we got these little holes. What else? Oh, and then on the wheel over here. Oh, and then over over on the, this is for the um, the bobbin right there. So, oh, that's, that's, this is pretty easy. This is actually a lot easier than my, the 70s machine. A lot, lot easier. There you have to open it up and oil every little bit. This one, the oil just goes where it needs to go. That's kind of awesome. All you do is drip some drips into these little holes. Easy peasy. Way easier. Oh my gosh. This is a million times easier than, than the later one. <laughs> All right, let's get just this bobbin one. I think that's all she wrote right there. I, I mean, I think that's it. Well, that was easy. <laughs> that was way easy. Okay, so let's get the plate back on. I think I think we're done with this guy. I'm just gonna flip it to the front. Let's see, let's see if there's anything obvious in the bobbin area that we should be doing. Now, like right here, it looks like there's one of those holes. I I wonder. No, that's not really a moving part. It looks like. 
there's moving parts here. I would think I'd have to do those. It's actually kind of dusty back in there too. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna get right back in here. Get some of the dust out. Yeah, I wonder if, if we have to get it from the back and get anything. Didn't really seem that way though. I am gonna put, just cause I see it moving, I am gonna put a little dab back in here. Oop, and I just got dust all over it. All right, and I am gonna put one just in this circle blob, just cause in those other places that meant oil. So, all right, covered our bases there, I think. Yeah, it was easy in the 30s and they complicated things in the 60s and 70s <laughs> with these machines, I, I guess so. <clears throat> All right, let's get this guy back in. It looks like we have quite a bit of bobbin on there yet. Or well, not quite a bit, but some. More than I thought. So we're, we're not out of bobbin yet. I'm happy about that. So again, this bobbin is a little different than I'm, what I'm used to. It has this little lever down here. Then you can pop it out. But all right, we're going to leave that. And uh, I think we cleaned the bottom of this guy already. This is the, the plate. All right, and this got screwed in. Yeah, literally there's just two screws to this whole thing. Huh, huh, huh. One of which I already freaking lost. Okay, where did you go? Eh, okay. Somewhere over here is a screw. Somewhere within my one foot area of this, this table is the other screw for this. So we'll, oh, I see it. It was hiding behind, uh, hiding behind the um, spool of thread. Oh, those mini vacuum cleaners. Oh, for tiny areas. Oh, that might be great, Nolene. Does more of the bobbin case come apart? Uh, it looks like, you know, it looks like if I got some screws, there's three screws here that I could take apart. That makes me a little nervous. Let's pop the bobbin out again. Oops, shoot. Bobbin came out of the thing. All right. Um, well, it doesn't come easily out like the other one. I think it would require screwing. So I suspect that this screw is only there for this pivot action. Yeah, I'm not gonna mess with that, but uh, it also didn't look like it was a necessary action in the oiling of it all. So I'm not gonna worry, I'm not gonna worry about it. Let's screw this, get this guy down here. I need a smaller screwdriver. This is already the tiniest screwdriver. Ugh, all right. I hope these two screws were the same because I didn't check to see if one was in the right spot and one wasn't. Come on, Buster. All right, so I, I feel good that we, we did this machine right as far as oiling and everything. Oh, I cannot get this back in though. Let's see, do I have a tinier screwdriver? I don't think so. What if we take a bigger screwdriver? There we go. Oh no, it's still not working. All right, I'm gonna try taking this one out and switching them. Did you get the hand crank? Oh no, I didn't, you're right, I didn't do the hand crank, I'll have to I'll have to do that. You're right. I, I did miss that. Get on there. Ooh, there's this guy just doesn't want to get back in. Uh, 
Okay, we're getting it now. Sheesh, it's touchy all of a sudden. There we go. Huh, made it. Now get this guy back in. I need smaller, pointier fingers for this stuff. All right, there we go. Let's get the um, this bobbin plate guy on top. And we're back together. All right, let's let's quickly oil the wheel. So right back, it just um, kind of pointed, you know, again, metal on metal. I'm guessing it just, just, I don't know, drip it down in here. Oh, right there, there's there's a hole. Here, you guys. Um, right there, I don't know if you can see, but there's one of those oil holes. So that's that's what we're gonna get. And I am, oop, there we go. That was quite a bit. I am just about out of this oil, which makes me suspect that it's been leaking or something. We'll, we'll see. Um, all right, we are good to go here again for a little while. Uh, I'm going to move this guy out of the way, and we will bring our the 70s Kenmore from 75, and we'll try and yank on that, that uh, presser foot for a sec here. Oh, that's... Because the tread of the screw could be different. Oh yeah, the yeah, that's the tread of the screw could have been different. So I think ugh, just switching those two. Oh man, this is just heavy and stuck to the towel. I just put a towel down in case it got dirty or you know oil fell or you know just to not scratch the table. It's probably the biggest reason. Okay, so here is a few decades later we got the 70s Kenmore from 75 and uh, so the issue with this is the presser feet so okay now they look down good so uh, if I put this up there, there you can see so if I get in real close, so here's here's the button. So I'm looking at lowering and I'm raising the feed dog. So why I would wanna do that is um, like for, with free motion quilting, we want those down because we don't want it to pull the fabric along. Those The reason for these like sawtooth uh, guys right there, that's just to pull, to keep pulling the fabric like a stitch and another stitch and uh, when you're doing free motion quilting, you want to move that yourself. So you don't want those interfering. So some something who knows, but now it seems to be working. So good. But if we look in here, there you can see um, the sawtooth guys there. All right, I'm putting them up. And this lever here raises and lowers. And this is what was getting stuck. So the sewing machine guy, he was getting like a screwdriver and he was like just yanking in here and trying to force, oops, trying to trying to force this guy down. And it just needed to go up and down and up and down a few times before it'd get a little loose, just like a piece of machinery that's gotten a little stuck and needs to be yanked on a little bit. But it seems to be working. So now that they're up and I turn the wheel, you know, they'll come all the way up and around and down. And then you can kind of feel them when I get high. So now with them down, there we go. So they've gone down. And now when I turn, turn, they just stay, they, they're still doing the movement, but they just stay down. So this seems to be working. Fabulous. Um, I thought, uh, according to him, it was keeping on getting stuck. So they've been down for a while now. So maybe, maybe, maybe that lever there is just used to being up and down. Although now it didn't really move, did it? Oh, there it goes up and down. And now I've lowered the feet again and there, now it's staying down. That's exactly what it's supposed to do, so yay. Um, so I, I don't actually think this needs oiling right now because um, I oiled it right before I brought it in to see him. So he was just um, working on this particular area. It could need it could need a little bit more oil, but I think, I think that's not the, wasn't the issue. The issue was just a ton of 
not being used. Like, it was just straight stuck. So by him loosening it, not loosening it, but he put hot, hot air on it. So he had a blow dryer. And then he was just yanking on it, just trying to get it ungooked and, and lost. So, all right, I'm going to just let this be. Uh, I love that that is working because I was a little nervous about that because I, I have not been um, playing with this. He told me to just every day or so get in there and make sure this raises and lowers, you know, get in there and push it around if it needs to, but it seems to be working. Fabulous. That did not work for the entirety of me owning, owning this machine, I don't think, but I never knew any different because I wasn't doing free motion quilting till, till lately. So I'm going to leave it down for now. Uh, and uh, we'll get this guy off to the side. That was easy enough. Great. And now we're going to play with that 1967 machine again. I have no idea. Um, I, I, I know nothing about it. <laughs> so, we can, so we can see. But remember it had the cams on the top? I'll show you that again. On this one from the 70s, it is, it is right on the side here. So you can see all the um, different stitches are on the side. And I just, you know, I have the option of a red stitch, the orange stitch, or the white stitch. And I just flip, flip this to whatever type of stitch I want. So if I want the red stitches to show up, I turn this to the red. And if I want the white stitches to be the stitch, I turn it to the white. But these are not decorative. These are all kind of like dressmakers things. So certain things for like edging the bottom of a dress or working with stretchy fabric. They're very practical stitches stitches on, on this guy. And then this is the stitched length down here. All right, so let's, uh, let's back up again and I will move um, this machine. One other thing that we're gonna discover, I just looked at it a little bit. Um, this, this, the top just comes off like that. The 1967 one, I think I'm gonna have to unscrew it. So we'll see, we'll see what that's like. All right. All right, I'm gonna have to walk around the table to, well, I don't know, maybe I can pull it towards me. They're so heavy. Oh my God, this one. <laughs> Holy cow. Okay, to start out with, this is at least 10 pounds heavier than the 70s one and, and that 30s one. Oh my God, that was really heavy just now. Okay. Hooey, let's, oh my God, we're just gonna rotate the towel here. <laughs> wow, okay, that was heavy. So this, this uh, machine was meant to go in a table. Uh, it looks a lot like the bottom here looks a lot like the, uh, the 1930s one. It's perfectly flat and it has like the little feet here. So kind of what that tells me is this is meant to be screwed. It has a little ledge. It, it looks like it's meant to be so meant to be put in a cabinet. And that is actually how I acquired this. I really liked I, there was a, a sewing machine, like uh, like a big, big sale on all sewing stuff. And um, I actually like the cabinet that this one was in. I wanted to get the cabinet to put the black sewing machine in because the black sewing machine was cool. That's the one I wanted. But I wanted this nice cabinet that this one was in. And they wouldn't sell it to me without also getting the machine. <laughs> so that's how I've acquired acquired this machine here. And I was told that it didn't work very well. Um, so let's just take a look at it. I know nothing about it at all uh, as far as like I don't I'm not one with this machine because I have not used it. I'm just gonna wipe it off real quick. It's dusty. It's been just sitting sitting in here for a while and then you know it was in that case that cabinet for who knows how long. Um, you know I don't know how to use those cams. We'll try those out. Oh, and I did print out the this instructions too, so I'm, I'm definitely going to want to find where the oiling section is in this. Let me just see if I can find that. I think I saw it. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, this is... This is very descriptive. <laughs> Look, it's just like a black blob with arrows. So, but, you know, actually, I think I might be able to sort of figure this out. Um, <laughs> just from the placement of the arrows. I think there was one more page before this printed really oddly. Oh, nope. So that's the first page of oiling that may be underneath. Yeah. And then, then this is the top. So, all right. 
Oh, and then we have a side. See, look at, look, there's like 80 places to oil compared to the other machine um, that from the 1930s where it was just two little blips and we're, we're done. So um, let's just, let's just peek, let's peek in the bobbin case here. All right, there's a bobbin. So this, this feels, this is, you know, a lot closer in age to my 70s Kenmore. Um, so this, this whole front area feel, feels very similar. So the bobbin, here we are. The bobbin is exactly the same as my 70s, 70s one. So you can see it's different than the 30s one. This has that little lever. Um, let's just see if they've even put the bobbin in correctly. All right, there's some gross vintage thread on there. So we'll eventually change that, but we can test it with that in there probably. All right. Oop, get in there. There we go. All right. So that seems fine. I'm going to leave it out for now. We'll oil it up and, and see what that does first. So, you know, I don't know what <laughs> a lot of these things do. So I've noticed these on other vintage machines. Um, I have no idea what it does. I have no idea what that thing does. Um, this looks like stitch length. Ooh, no, this is the width. Never mind. It's the stitch width. Cause look, I'm I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm I'm it's on zero right now, which means, you know, like a straight stitch. But if I if I'm turning it, it's jumping to the side. Oh, and then reversed. Oh weird. R. Do we think that means reverse? And then there's an F here. Ooh, and then back around. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff happening here that I don't know what, what all this is. Oh, is this for the feed dogs, the R? F and R, I, I can see the feed dogs moving actually. But it's still moving the needle. All right, what I do know is that the zero means straight. So I think we can count on that. This must be the stitch length. So I think if I turn on this screw here, we'll get a little closer for you guys. There you go. So I think if I turn this, that's um, the stitch length, I would presume. And this is probably just if I want to go to reverse a couple stitches. So, but then there's this R, see there's an R here. I can't go that direction. So. There's an F here. I wonder if it has to do with this. And then there's this R here, which I don't know. Does that mean re reverse? I don't know. I have no idea what that is for. So we'll have to look that up at some point. Um, all right. So I think, you know, this stuff here, I still don't understand. U is for, oh, there's no U. It's an L, it's an F and an R. So there's an F and an R here, and then there's an F and an R here. You'd see if it runs before before I oil. Okay, this is re for reverse and forward, I think. Like if I just wanna go reverse a few stitches and then forward again. Um, <laughs> so like a R, so like a pirate. Yeah, all right, you know what? I think you're right. Let's, let's just give this a test before we do much more. I just wanna make sure that it's, um, I'm gonna, Oh, you think this is for the cams? Like turning the cams on and off or? Yeah, I don't know. We're gonna have to, we're gonna touch all the buttons. I just wanna make sure that this is flat on the towel so the towel doesn't get stuck with, oh geez. All right, actually, I don't even know how to plug this guy in. Oh, weird, okay, so there's an outlet. So here's the, I'm gonna back up here for you guys. Here is the pedal. So I suppose we should just, you know, it looks like it, it might be a good idea to get a new, new wiring for this. Gosh, I haven't even taken this, this rubber band off of here. I literally have not plugged this in. So let's not get electrocuted. How about that? So there's no blatant phrase so far. All right. 
Let's throw this on the ground. So here is the plug and I, and I just looked over here. It looks like you just stuff it right underneath. Oh God, there we go. All right, we're plugged in. <laughs> it is so heavy. This is significantly heavier. But again, you're not intended to move this around. You're supposed to, um, you're supposed to have it in your, whatever your cabinet is, right? All right, I don't think, I don't think, so. I don't think the fabric, this will, the towel will mess anything up. All right, let's get the bobbin in and I will get um, some thread up the top and let's see if we can thread it. You think this is for the cams? Is that what you're saying? Or this is? I'm not quite sure. So let's let's look at the top again. So by cams, this is what we're talking about here. So if we open this up. I don't know if that was right here. Let's take a look at the another one. So it came with it came with a set of cams and you can buy these. Like you can find these on eBay and stuff just the different cams. Oh, look at this one. Here. Let's let's take a look at this. So this one look, it makes like a I don't know, kind of like a little heart and a little zigzag. That's kind of interesting. So you stick this in, there we go. And then in theory, when you sew, somehow that's how it's making a decorative stitch. <laughs> but again, I, I don't know how to activate that. I don't, maybe it just does it by the act of putting this in. We're gonna have to play around with that. It's the feed dog switch, see the U. So the U, is the feed dog up and down? So I can't even move this. Um, so maybe that, oh, maybe I have to press this and turn? No. <laughs> so many buttons that I don't know. Okay, let's, let's just try and thread this. See what happens. I'm hoping we can figure that out. All right, I already can't figure that out. Do we go, with the, look, it has, uh, it has, um, a twisty back here and up here. Do we go through both? Probably, huh? Oh yeah, you know what? I bet you we do go like that because you know my, my other machine you cut across right to here, but we got the cams in the way. So we want to be able to open that and putz around with that without having to take our, our thread off. So that's that's on. Oh yeah, let's turn the power on. How do I even do that? Let's see, is there even an on button? I don't know, let's just press the pedal. Oh, let's plug it in. <laughs> well, we gotta plug it in first. Ooh, gosh. All right, we're plugged in. All right, I'm pressing the pedal and it's not doing anything, so there must actually be an on button somewhere. Whoop, jeez, okay, that's the on button. <laughs> All right, uh, that's the on button right there. So I clicked it off and I'm pressing the pedal, nothing, clicked it on, and now we got, we got motion. So, all right, push the button on the base to turn on the light. Oh, so does it, is there a light somewhere too? Oh yeah, probably on the side. Oh, okay, so there is a light. It's very similar to to my other one. It is not turning on though, so I suspect that I may need to get a new bulb. Um, I actually may have the old bulb from my other machine, so um, I bet you I just need to replace that. That's easy enough. That's figure outable. All right, let's let's try and finish threading this. So we did get it out of the way of the cam by going through both of those. All right, so then let's go through here. Ooh, now this looks different too. A little, just barely different. I don't think I got it all the way. Now I should be able to lift this up and it should, hmm. There we go. So now, now it got in this little side bit here. Okay. This always, this is like 
always a, a scary thing for me. Like a new machine, like threading a machine has always been like a mystery, right? So it's always, I always get a little anxious um, threading a machine, but that seems to be working. It's feeling right. Ooh, that was a, awfully scratchy for that little area. Okay, we're under here. So it looks like I, I'm probably gonna, I'm probably able to do a two needle thing here because it got, has space for two needles. So this is a, a really big looking needle on here, but I'm gonna just leave it. Actually, you know what? I have a new, I have a needle right here. Let's just, let's just change it. Yeah, this, this needle is huge. So this one was on there. Um, this is just the one that we took off of the other machine. I think this might be a bigger one too, but let's just do it. So for this one, the flat side points away. Okay. Because it's still kind of big. All right. Let's get that bobbin up. All right. That seems to work. All right, I'm going to put the plate back on here. Come on. There we go. All right, fabric. Let's throw some fabric through here. Yeah, it'd be better with that light, but the light's not working. Oh, we did that, Arlo. Uh, we, we did the, we pressed the, um, Pedal to see if it works. I do like this super flat surface. My 70s Kenmore is not like that. It does not have a flat surface like this. Oh, I gotta press the button again. Oh, there we go. Ah. Woo! It's it's quick. Okay, I'm gonna have to definitely get used to this pedal. Hold on here. Huh. It definitely sounds weird. Okay, let's, uh, I need a little scissors here. I don't know. Oh gosh, it smells. It has that, it has that new no, that new motor smell for sure. I don't know. Those look like decent stitches to me. <laughs> I think, um, actually the tension is pretty good too. Right away. Oh my gosh, that motor smell though. Oh, I'm going to sneeze, I think. Yeah, I think the tension's actually pretty good where it's at, too. I don't know. Oh, gosh, that smell. <laughs> All right. Oh, wow, yeah, that, that smells that smells a lot. Although, when I first um, used that, that black, that black Kenmore, um, that one smelled quite a bit, too, the first couple times, and now it doesn't smell like that anymore. So it probably just needs to be woken up a bit here. So I'm going to just turn that... Um, I'm just turning the dial over here. Let's change the, the stitch width. I'm just gonna switch it to a two and let's see if it does a zigzag for us. Oh, if you wet the needle, it'll thread easier. Oh, I, Arlo, I, I, I never knew that before. I'd have to try that sometime. Okay, so that did not, that is not a zigzag. So it just moved the needle like two notches this way, but it's still doing a straight stitch. Interesting. So now I'm going over to four. Ooh, is my presser foot big enough for that? Let's, let's see. Yep. Ooh, God, just barely. Okay, so interesting. So though that's not a zigzag stitch. It is just moving the needle. Oh, and you know what? Now the L and the R. Oh, wait, there aren't L and R. It's a Oh, I thought maybe it was a L and an R so you could go left or right. Huh. But it's not. Okay, you guys, I still have no idea what those do. All it's doing is moving the stitch over. Which I know you want sometimes. Do I, okay, so I, do I need, Pamela, so do I need a zigzag cam? Is that how that works? Let's, let's try the cam situation. So I'm gonna put this on, oops, I'm gonna put this on straight again. All right, we are a straight stitch. Let's just try this, let's try this reverse quick. All right, it reverses forward. So what I did, what I did right there is I just flicked this guy up to the R and that seemed to work perfectly. 
let's just change the stitch length. I can do that from this dial. So I'm gonna make um, a really big, oh, is R for zipper foot? Interesting, okay, R for zipper foot. What's the F for then? All right, so here's a really wide stitch and I'm gonna put it up to like where this red line is. Maybe that's like what they suggest for stitches. So this is like a really, really small stitch. All right, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's see what we got here. Okay, yeah, look at, look at that big wide stitch there. That's cool. And then we got to like this little tiny skinny stitch. Yeah, tension got a little goofy there, but I don't know. It's looking pretty dang good. I don't, I don't know why they said it was broken. Or it needed, maybe they just need, said it needed work or something. So I'm going to put that down a little bit again. Let's throw a cam in. Actually, let's see what those, I'm going to, I just want to try one more thing. So I'm going to flip it to the R or I'll flip it to that four and then this F. All right. So it's not doing anything obvious <laughs> putting it on the F. So I don't know what that did. And then now I'm going to put it on that R. So the R kind of centered it again. Oh, interesting. So the R, I wonder if that lowered the feed dogs. No, the feed dogs are still going up, but the R is just stitching in one spot. But wouldn't a zero, oh no, a zero would move it forward. Do we think the R is the cams? Maybe that's it. All right, let's let's throw a cam in and see. R is for reverse, but it wasn't it wasn't going in reverse. So on this wheel, so there's an R and an F here, I, and I'm assuming that means like forward, and this is the reverse because I can flip up here and it goes reverse. But there's also an R and an F on here. Is it going faster on F? No, I don't think so. All right, let's throw a cam in. Let's just let's just let's just try something else here. All right, I'm gonna pop this open. Let's, uh, so here's the ones that it comes with. Let's just check these out. Oh, and it looks like it came with a buttonhole foot too. Oh gosh, check that puppy out. So there we go, buttonhole foot. Dang, that's crazy looking. Maybe it has to do with the buttonhole. I don't know. You would think you could stitch one side and then it would stitch to the other side. I, I don't, I don't know. And then it comes with a needle thread or two, it looks like. I don't think I need that. All right, so here are the different stitches. Um, it looks like, you know, a bigger to smaller zigzag stitch. Yep, I'm gonna have to look in the manual soon too. You lift up the lever to go in the first. Yep, so Barbara, that's, that's, I got that. You lift up to the lever. So this has like the number of what cam I'm guessing it is. So you can order these off of eBay and stuff. And I think there's like a bajillion of them. Okay, so this looks like a zigzag. Maybe we try this one out. I don't know, they're all zigzags of sorts. Let's do this one, that one's cool looking. All right, let, let's start with a, let's, let's start here. All right, so I presume there's a little dot there. I presume I just stick it in there like that. I don't know, I don't know if there's anything else I have to do. It seems like there's not, so I'm gonna put that down. Okay, and now let's just see what happens. So I'm on the zero for my dial over here. Okay, so it's not doing anything yet. So maybe I have to um, put a width on it, maybe? I don't know, let's put it on a three. Oh, there, we got a zigzag going. Ooh, and it's getting little and bigger again. Okay, all right, the cam is working. All right, and I suspect so here we go, it got, it got big and then little. I suspect to make this decorative, we're gonna want it way less. And you know what? I bet you that's what this red line is here. So there's this weird red line in an odd spot there. And I bet, and that's where I put it on there and it made those really little stitches. I bet you that is where I wanna be. There's our little red line on the side here. I bet you I wanna match those for these cams. So that will make, like the stitch way closer together. Well, this seems like a totally usable machine. Oh, see, there we go. Ooh, tons of stitching. 
Okay, this is totally working. I'm gonna flip it up and put a different cam in. These do just literally pop in and out. So let's do another one. Let's do this, this little like wavy line one. Ooh, how fun. You can collect these guys. Yay, decorative stitches, how fun. My other one doesn't have decorative stitches. Okay, let's do this goofy little circle, or like, I don't know, kind of a heart-shaped one. So this is easy. All you do is literally pop them in and out. And and we'll take a look at this um, in a bit here. Ooh, that one's going around in a circle. Okay, that one's going back and forth a little bit. You know what, we're gonna test all of these. I only have two more. Let's do them. That one was pretty fancy. So here again, just so you guys can see, it's got this kind of door that opens and that's why, you know, the thread got out of the way of the door. So we can easily switch this little um, peg there. There we go. Close it up. I bet you I don't even need to close it. Oh yeah, it, it does. All right, and I'm almost out of fabric, so let's get the last one in. It's kind of like a, a fat to skinny zigzag with like a curve in it. That is definitely what that notch on the side was, that red, the red bar is like, that's where you want the cams. All right, and we are to the end. So I didn't, I didn't have to have this on the, that F or the R here. Uh, I just needed a thickness. So I needed to put in how thick I wanted this to be, the, the cam. So I suspect if I did it on a four, it would be a super wide one. You know, a, a two would be a not so wide one. So maybe that's all the, that these numbers are for. But there we are, look at it, totally. Look how sweet this one is with the little wave. This one's got like little hearts in it. And then this one's kind of like um, like a heart rate monitor, <laughs> kind of up and down. And and then we have the one that goes like like a thick wave, like a rounded zigzag to a little bit. Oh, how sweet. Oh, you saw a machine like this the other day with a huge box of cams. Okay, I want to start, <laughs> this is ridiculous, but now I want to start collecting these. Like, look how cute this wave is. I could totally see doing some of our... Um, our applique, like little edges of applique with some cute stitches like this. And obviously like new machines have like tons of um, stuff. Oh, Terry, you think that this, the R and the F is for reverse and forward with the cams? Oh, that could be. All right, and you guys, I am seeing freaking nothing wrong with this machine. I bet you it just needs to be oiled or something and then we're we're fine. But that's a fun discovery. I've never used cams before. I've seen them. I've seen people um, use them. I've seen them advertised. But yeah, see, look, it, it, it's just this shape is running along the edge, like pushing the needle where it needs to go or something. See, it smooths out here. I'm guessing that's where it's close to, to um, the little edge and then it gets fat up on the top. Interesting. Oh, so just guessing the RF would be, oh, for buttonhole making, which has four parts to it. Oh, that's way too fancy for me. <laughs> Crazy buttonhole stitching. Uh, there was actually a picture though in here of that. Oh, look, so here's some of the cams. Oh, look at this advice, like how to, how to do corners on the cams. Um, ooh, there's a lot to, lot to learn about this, it looks like. Oh, so here's some, oh, here we go, okay. Oh, here we are, let's just, let's just look at this. So here's that F and the R, right? So F, okay, I don't know, gets us to there. And then the middle of the R and F, what? The middle of the R and F does this little turn. And then, then the R goes back up. Oh, cool. Okay, are you guys kind of getting that? So, all right, we have it on the F. All right, we're doing this. <laughs> I gotta see this in action. So we're gonna make a buttonhole right now. 
magic buttonhole. Okay. I probably need the cam out though. Do you think? Let's put the, I don't know. Do we need that in there? I might need the special like buttonhole stitching. Let's just leave it in and see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna put this on the F. All right, and we'll just see what it does. Let's, okay, I gotta make this stitch a little wider. You know what, I think I needed just a zigzag cam though, and I don't have it just a plain zigzag. Maybe I should just take the cam out. Let's do that, see what happens. Come on. All right, so I'm on the F. Oh, see now it's just doing a straight stitch. I bet you I need, I bet you I need a, uh, a zigzag cam. I don't think I have a zigzag cam. Let's just, uh, I have this kind of, I only have the cams that have like a zigzag to nothing. Put the button hole foot on. Okay, so here's the button hole foot, but that doesn't, that's not gonna make, this isn't gonna make the needle go, this is just for, this is just like for measurement, I think, like I probably can lock, actually I don't know how this works at all. I probably just make this the length that I want my buttonhole and then when it gets up to it I know when to stop and it'll come forward again. That's that's what this is for totally. But I think the issue is I still need a buttonhole cam. Oh gosh, that's that's screwed on way too tight. Okay, I'm I'm not going to be able to get that unscrewed without a a thing. But yeah, so I I do need a buttonhole cam it looks like, but I think we can kind of get the effect. Um, I didn't zigzag before. How I zigzagged was with this cam, but you see how it goes from thick to thin? So we're going to do a buttonhole, but it's going to be a weird zigzaggy buttonhole. <laughs> or it's going to be a weird thick to thin <laughs> thing. So let's just, let's just give it a try. So I'm on the F. Okay. So now, in theory, if I go in between... Oh gosh, it's hard to move. Okay, in between the R and the Here's the R, here's the F. If I go in between, is it gonna do like that weird little arc for me? Not really. Then let's go back this way. I guess kind of. All right, I mean, it kind of, it kind of jutted itself over a little bit. Okay, so now let's, let's go in the middle again here. Huh. And then forward, yeah. Huh. Okay, so I think it's doing, when it's full on the F and the R, it's doing some bigger, faster stitches. And then when I go in the middle to do those little curve bits, it's jutting over and doing um, uh, kind of shorter stitches, which, Okay, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to just move forward here and we'll we'll just try it again. Again, I I don't have a regular normal zigzag cam. So, it's not going to look exact, but all right, we're going forward. Then we're going to go in between. Oh, maybe I have to do it. Well, no. We're just going to go in between. Okay, I don't know. And then then the R I don't think it's quite working how they want it to be working. And then we'll go, maybe I have to keep moving with this at the same time? I don't know. This is going to take some research here. I think the button, I, like I honestly think this is just for measurement. I think we put this on and we put it where we want and then as it moves forward then that's the width we want and as it moves back. I suspect that's all this is for. This is not gonna give me a zigzag just by putting this on. So um, I'm not sure. I think that is more for measurement. But let's let's pop this up and see what we got going on here. Oops. All right, so you can kind of see, you know, I don't know, It's it, it was being weird for sure, but it did jut itself over and then go back up. Again, that, this is that weird cam. Okay, so now here it was acting kind of weird. Like the reverse was going really little and then the forward was not going. The stitch length was much bigger. So I don't know. We'll have to figure that out.
But anyway, I'm pretty excited about about these cams here though. <laughs> Especially this wiggly one. I don't know. I just kind of like it. So I don't know. I don't see anything wrong with this machine. You know, maybe I'm not looking in the right spots or maybe there's nothing wrong. So I think, uh, I think tomorrow, I know we've been on here quite a bit tonight, but I would like to just continue with this a little bit tomorrow. I want to, I want to open this up and oil it and, um, Maybe I'll read the manual a little bit and, and see about that buttonhole thing a little bit more just to play around. But let's let's finish this up. I want I want three clean machines here tomorrow. So I think I think tomorrow we'll just continue this. I will uh, will oil this and um, I don't know. Maybe we'll work on something here. I have maybe we'll do like a little mini finish it Friday. I probably have a little project here that I can work on. Maybe we'll try and sew with this machine a little bit. We'll wind some bobbin thread, uh, oil it up. And oh, we haven't tested that. We haven't tested out the bobbin. So we'll do that tomorrow and give it a go. All right. Um, the dimples on the bottom of the foot hold the fabric in place as the foot moves. Oh yeah. The, the feet here. Um, all right, you guys, I'm going to flip you around and uh, we'll call it an evening here. But this has been fun. This is, I like, have not touched this machine at all, so I'm pretty stoked about it. All right, hello again. Oh, the silver thing. Yeah, the, so the silver thing on the side uh, that looks like a little arc, that, that's a, a, a thread cutter for sure. My other machine has that too. I never use it just because I'm, I'm not used to it. Oh, and it's not sharp at all. <laughs> yeah, that that's just straight not working. Um, the the uh, that um, thread cutter. <laughs> so yeah, so we'll we'll play with this a little bit more. Like I said, that I couldn't loosen that screw that was holding the foot, so we'll have to we'll have to use a screwdriver for that to try and loosen it. But yeah, I would love to um, flip this around, oil, uh, like oil it. Uh, I I still don't know what that you think that one little dial thing that it looks like a dial but it doesn't actually turn so i don't know i'm gonna find out what all these uh, other little knickknacks are on on this machine um but i'm stoked i'm really kind of excited about these cams i have a i have a hunch this might be a thing that in a weak moment i might head over to ebay and see <laughs> see what's available for cams like i need more stuff <laughs> but they are they are kind of cute and I can't do decorative stitches on any of my other machines like zero of my other machines do do uh, decorative stitching <laughs> so if with the 60s uh, the machine from the 67 can do some decorative little stitches on those cams yeah, I wouldn't mind having a few more <laughs> All right, you guys. Thanks again for joining me here on a Thursday. I, you know, it's neat to see all these machines all in the same place and just comparing them a little bit. Um, just know it like there's history to them, you know, they're growing, you know, while they started in the 30s and went all the way to the 70s, I think it's just pretty interesting. So yeah, so we will, uh, we'll flip this over and oil it tomorrow. I know I need another table now, right? I need another, <laughs> another home to do that, Glennis. That's, uh I'm not going to be able to have another big table somewhere. <laughs> but all right, you guys, thanks again for joining me, and I will see you tomorrow night. Have a great evening. Good night.